Hello, this is Dana Arcuri, author, speaker, survivor, and trauma recovery coach from DanaArcuri.com. Thank you so much for joining me today. We are going to be talking about something extremely serious, and it does involve sibling abuse, the silent epidemic. And so many of you have already known, already viewed a lot of my videos since 2018 when I started to publicly share my own personal experience with my toxic siblings, my narcissistic mother, and how traumatic these experiences have been for me. You know, it's really amazing that on this journey, there's been so much healing that has taken place, not only for me, but for you, when I'm discussing these traumatic events and how they impact not only our lives, but so many other lives around us, including our own family members, our children, and future generations. You know, it takes great courage, it takes great strength to rise up from the devastating abuse and to break the silence and to share our stories. There is power in numbers, and that is why I continue to advocate for abuse survivors, because we must know that we cannot stay silent any longer, that part of our trauma recovery journey is speaking the truth about our personal experiences and naming what happened. And so today I'm going to share a lot of the statistics, a lot of the information that I've researched, and some of my own personal experiences about sibling abuse. So here we go. According to the article, Sibling Abuse and Bullying, The Hidden Epidemic, this was in the article by Darlene Lancer in Psychology Today, and she shares, often labeled sibling rivalry and ignored, Sibling bullying and abuse cause real trauma. Sibling abuse is the most common but least reported abuse in the family. Prevalence is higher than spousal or child abuse combined with consequences well into adulthood similar to a parent-child abuse. Up to 80% of youth experience some form of sibling maltreatment yet it's been called the forgotten abuse. Very interesting that in my research, I came across this awesome website. Wow, I'm so excited to see more people speaking out and speaking up about sibling abuse. So this website is called hopeforsiblings.com and they share, quote unquote, in America alone, there are over 40 million sibling abuse survivors. So let's let that sink in. Over 40 million people have suffered sibling abuse. This is absolutely devastating and yet we must continue to share our true stories to educate others and continue to build awareness. Sibling abuse is underreported and goes under the radar. Typically, an early childhood sibling rivalry can start out with squabbles, disagreements, name calling, and competition between brothers and sisters. The rivalry is reciprocal. The motive is for parental attention. Moderate levels of sibling rivalry are a healthy sign that each child are able to express his or her wants and needs. So first, before we get into what is the signs of sibling abuse, let's first speak about the signs that are very common for sibling rivalry. So with sibling rivalry, there could be fighting, tattling, frustrations, being over demanding, competing in schools, sports, and for the parents' attention selfishness, teasing, name calling, hair pulling, constant bickering, jealousy, and throwing temper tantrums. And so when we think of sibling rivalry, we, we typically think of little children. But we must understand that while it starts out as young children in our early childhood, what can happen is oftentimes it can get worse and it can escalate into full-blown sibling abuse in the childhood, it could happen 
during very young years. It could happen in your teen years and it can carry on into your adulthood. The concern with sibling rivalry is when it turns into sibling abuse. The core root of sibling abuse is the intent to harm and control the other sibling. Instead of being a periodic incident, the abuse becomes a repeated pattern. This could carry on for months, years, and even decades. Typically, when young children experience abuse with their other sibling, in many, many cases, it does carry on throughout adulthood. It involves one or more siblings who takes the role of aggressor toward another who regularly feels disempowered. Sibling abuse includes ongoing bullying, harassment, and the motive to hurt the other sibling. Usually an older sibling will dominate the younger sibling and they try to push them around. They try to tell them what to do. They manipulate them, they gaslight them. And if they are physically stronger and larger, they might have physical force that they use against this younger sibling. You know, so, you know, I'm going to call it out. Hey, I'm, I'm number five in the family. I'm the youngest of five girls. And my four older sisters have definitely abused me psychologically. Um, there's definitely one where there was physical abuse in my childhood. You know, as an adult, it has really skyrocketed. You know, when you set healthy boundaries with your siblings, when a sibling loves you and they respect you and they care for you, then they respect your boundaries. But when we're dealing with toxic, abusive siblings, they will hurt you, they will harm you, they will gaslight you, they will stalk you, they will destroy, or at least try to destroy your career your reputation, and everything about you. And so we must understand that this is quite serious and criminal. Unlike rivalry, the intention of sibling abuse is to establish superiority and to provoke fear and distress in the other sibling. Factors to consider include the motives, the degree of severity, the power of imbalance in this relationship, a victimization element, physical injuries, and trauma. And so now I'm going to list the signs of sibling abuse. And remember, there could be many, many more that I will not be mentioning because obviously there's only so much time on this video. So here we go. Common signs of sibling abuse. One sibling is extremely aggressive towards the other sibling. The other sibling feels helpless and powerless. So the person who's being abused, oftentimes they feel helplessness and powerlessness. There is definitely an imbalance in power. Typically the abusive sibling is a control freak. Another sign of sibling abuse is that the toxic sibling is highly judgmental there might be tickled torture when you're younger, and as you get older, it could become physical force, violence, sexual assault, etc., etc. Involving sibling abuse, there's so many other dynamics. There's bullying, gaslighting, controlling, intimidation, manipulation, cruelty, extreme envy and jealousy. So we already know that a lot of siblings are extremely jealous of one another and it gets to a point where it becomes extremely destructive and the patterns are very unhealthy with that. The one sibling who's a bully could be terrorizing the other sibling. There's pathological lying, degradation, scapegoating the sibling. Oh my goodness, raise your hand if you're the family scapegoat or the black sheep of the family, I know I am. Then there is retaliation after the one sibling sets healthy boundaries. The other sibling will get so furious, so ticked off that they will create smear campaigns and retaliate. They will try to destroy the other sibling's possessions. They lie, steal, and cheat from their sibling. 
Physically, they abused their sibling. They spread rumors about their sibling. They tried to destroy the sibling's career and reputation. Emotionally, they abused their sibling. This is psychological abuse, and yes, it is quite traumatic. They may have their friends gang up on their sibling. There are some real horror stories out there that I am aware of. I've done my hard work of research and have read some real whew, eye-opening true stories about siblings who have their friends gang up on the other sibling and literally beat them up or rape them. It is extremely criminal. Next is the toxic sibling who is abusive might threaten the sibling. There may be sadistic behaviors where they want to watch their sibling suffer. Now we're getting into sociopathic tendencies. Um, they might be narcissistic at this point. They might have narcissistic personality disorder. They could be a sociopath, very, very mentally unstable. Next is they might use weapons and hurt the sibling. They blame shift their sibling. They recruit flying monkeys to bully and stalk their sibling. And that is definitely an experience of mine with my abusive siblings. Next is they may stalk the sibling online and even face-to-face -face in some cases. Again, you know, hey, how many years will these siblings be watching me? How many years are you going to waste your energy watching me? That's a million-dollar question, people. Next is they withhold important information from the sibling, and it could be legal information, legal documents. Next is they may steal the family trust fund and or inheritance from the sibling. Again, they want to punish the sibling. They're so furious with the sibling for speaking up about abuse that they will punish them. And one way is they will steal what is rightfully your birthright. Next is they might exclude you, the sibling, from knowing that your parent is on their deathbed, that your parent died, that one or more parents passed away. Uh, they won't invite you to the funeral or the memorial. So they will exclude you from a lot of different things that are actually legally your right to attend. You know, I've had people ask me, so I'm just gonna kind of keep this white out in the open. I've had a lot of people ask me, you know, why didn't you go to your mother and father's funeral? Number one, nobody told me. My siblings did not tell me when my father passed away, nor when he was on his deathbed, and you could bank on it. They withheld important information about his memorial service, so I wasn't aware of any of it, and they definitely did this intentionally to punish me. And as far as my mother, no, I did not know until two days prior to her death. I did not know that she was dying. I did not know she was in hospice. Again, the siblings withheld this important legal information from me. And they definitely did not include me in her memorial. Let's move on. Of the 34 common signs of sibling abuse that I just listed, I've experienced 29 of them that's pretty intense people you know and and let's be let's be clear a lot of times when we do experience sibling abuse narcissistic abuse a child abuse and a dysfunctional family and the various traumatic events such as my brother-in-law hmm yes my sister's husband sexually assaulted me in 2006 this causes compounded trauma this can cause PTSD and or complex PTSD so if you're going through this understand that you are not alone. And let's move on. Okay, so we're going to talk about adult survivors of sibling abuse. So adult survivors of sibling abuse may continue to struggle with a wide range of negative symptoms and or medical conditions, including, like I said, complex PTSD, regular PTSD, anxiety, depression, Disassociation, triggers, flashbacks, nightmares, hypervigilance, and the fight, flight, freeze, or fawn response. Understand that for trauma, these are all common and normal responses. Understand that it's not what's wrong with you. It's not what's wrong with you. 
It's about what happened to you, sibling abuse. Next, in addition, there are some individuals who suffer these types of abuse, especially with their siblings, and they may or may not battle eating disorders, addictions, difficulty focusing, panic attacks, somatic complaints, fear of the dark, insomnia, autoimmune conditions such as what I have, fibromyalgia, and or chronic pain. Survivor trauma accumulates into compounded trauma and it's related to adverse childhood experiences, which is called ACEs, which is linked to codependency and negative health as adults. So look up childhood, adverse childhood experiences, ACEs. In my book, Soul Cry, I do have this as a professional resource. Check it out. There's a free quiz online. You could find out what your score is. There's a score of like 10 as the total. I'm pretty sure it was 10, that's the total. My score was a nine, nine. Yes, I have compounded trauma and yes, I'm on a healing journey. I'll be damned if my toxic abusive siblings hinder my future, my health, my dreams, my life purpose and my life journey. Experiences of healing, health and hope. So I, I refuse to let them bring me down. You know, I refuse to let them dictate my life. I've done the hard work of healing. I've risen up from the ashes like the phoenix rising. I have done the hard work and it may not be easy. There may be bumps in the road, but I guarantee you the most beautiful best thing that ever happened to me this year in 2021 was going back to school to become a certified trauma recovery coach. It has educated me so much more about family abuse. It has educated me so much more about trauma, about domestic violence, and about the healing journey. And it has been an answer to my prayer. The stages of trauma recovery do require the survivor to identify what took place, name what happened, which is sibling abuse. Name the abuser. So whoever it was, name them. Don't keep it a secret. Number two, release. It's called traumatic amnesia. So what is traumatic amnesia? This is when you may have repressed, suppressed memories, or it could be that you're living in denial. Now, I'm not saying this like mean-spirited. This is another common sign of trauma. There are some, some trauma survivors that have fragmented memories. This is very, very common that you might not remember everything about their assault, about their abuse, but there are fragmented memories. There are pieces that you do remember. However, do not deny the truth and instead speak up about sibling abuse. And number five is let go of your guilt and toxic shame. Remember now, your toxic abusive siblings, they're going to say, it's your fault. You caused it. You're the problem. Oh, you're just a drama queen. Oh, you're so sensitive. And they're going to say that you're causing the drama. But let's understand the shame is not yours to carry. You are not the problem. Next is build awareness about sibling abuse and trauma. Number seven, educate yourself about different forms of abuse, including physical, mental, sexual, spiritual, and sibling abuse. You know, education is extremely powerful. The, the more I educate myself, the more confident I become, the more I heal, the more I move through the trauma process of understanding and facing what I did experience. And it's amazing how much healing is involved when you take a deep dive into your past trauma and you can understand there is definitely hope for healing. Number eight is seek emotional support with a trauma-informed, licensed therapist, counselor, psychologist, or a certified trauma recovery coach who specializes and sibling abuse. So you don't want to go to a therapist who has no education, no knowledge, no experience in sibling abuse. You really truly need to find a good fit for you. And I am a certified trauma recovery coach. Feel free to check out my website if you'd like emotional support. And I have various coaching packages that I offer you at DanaArcuri.com. 
Next, as an adult survivor of sibling abuse, the most difficult fact pertaining to it is that in statistics, 90% of abusive siblings deny and lie that they abused their sibling and they will not take accountability. And so we cannot fix them. We cannot change them. We cannot force them to speak the truth about their toxic abuse. But what we can do is emotionally seek support some people find that it helps to speak to one safe person, whether it's a friend, whether it's a family member, whether it's clergy, whether it's a professional such as myself who's a certified trauma recovery coach. The most important thing is to process, work through, and face what you have experienced and so you can heal. And there is always, always hope for healing. And so today, please know that I care about you I validate you, I see you, and I hear you, dear survivors. And you are a warrior. You are rising up above the ashes, and I so admire your courage and strength. Please share with me, have you experienced sibling abuse? Was it your brother? Was it your sister? Was it both? Was it, such as myself, all of my siblings? Share your stories with me down in the comment section like my video, subscribe to my channel, and you can visit me at DanaOrCurie.com. Thank you and God bless.